I hold a certain sort of reverence for nonfiction books that can manage to be engaging in the same way that fiction can be. Books that can strike that balance between offering clarity and inspiring awe. In a word, they are readable and enjoyably so. Today, I want to talk about five of my favorite nonfiction reads. Let's get into it. Now, I have a background in science and astronomy, so I tend to gravitate towards nonfiction books with a scientific bent. So it's probably not surprising that all five of these picks are directly science related. When I was picking them out, I wanted to choose books that helped to reshape my perceptions, books that offer both general knowledge, but also make you think. Each of these books in their own way has left a permanent mark on me. There are deeply human dramas of scientific discovery. There are extrapolations of wild sci-fi concepts into the real world. There are the musings of mischievous geniuses and everything in between. These are true stories that explain aspects of the world as well as make me grateful to be living in it. The thing that so often makes popular science books fall flat is that they need to do two things at once. They need to precisely inform and they need to stimulate further curiosity. Quantum by Manjeet Kumar walks this tightrope about as well as I've ever seen. Kumar exhibits both the panache of a historical dramatist and the acuity of a theoretical physicist as he brilliantly and provocatively recounts the birth of quantum theory. This book shows that the journey from Newtonian simplicity to quantum chaos was both academic and personal. It was turbulent and it was far more human than you might expect. We meet Einstein as more than just a set of theories with a funny mustache and a crazy haircut, but as a scorned skeptic, a man who just couldn't accept a universe ruled by chance. We follow Max Planck and Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg and Erwin Schrodinger and a veritable litany of others as they map out a world that refuses to play by deterministic rules. Quantum specifically asks two gnawing questions. What is reality and can reality ever truly be known? Two philosophical questions for the ages. As a sort of honorable mention, I feel like I need to also acknowledge When We Cease to Understand the World by Benjamin Labatut. It is technically fiction, but it is built on the scaffolding of real events. Labatut dives deeply into the lives of some of the same figures quantum explores, namely Einstein and Schrodinger and Heisenberg. But instead of explaining their theories, he immerses you in the psychological and existential ramifications of their discoveries. It reads like a riveting fever dream. It's unsettling and unforgettable, and I highly, highly recommend it. I first came across The Scientists by John Gribben while I was taking a history of science course during the sophomore year of my undergrad 
studies. I'd initially picked up the book just to pull a few quotes for a paper on the significance of the scientific revolution, but those excerpts were so engaging, so clearly and intelligently written that I ended up leisure reading the whole thing. Gribben manages to turn what could have been a dry chronology into a captivating narrative of discovery as he traces centuries of scientific breakthroughs from Copernicus to Crick and Watson. It is definitely ambitious, but it's also accessible and just endlessly quotable. I found myself returning to it again and again in my studies for information and inspiration. It's a kind of single volume biography of science itself, and it's wonderful. I feel I should also give an honorable mention here to Uncentering the Earth by William T. Volman. This was my second foray into Volman's work, my first being the Atlas, which I picked up thanks to the always spot on recommendations of Chris from Leaf by Leaf. In this book, Volman breathes new life into the familiar milestones of astronomical history. His writing is vibrant and curious and unabashedly intellectual as he transforms the story of how we came to understand our place in the universe into something positively electrifying. If you are even slightly interested in the history of astronomy, this one is an absolute joy. Michio Kaku's Physics of the Impossible reads like a love letter to science fiction. I have been obsessed with Star Trek ever since I was a kid, largely thanks to my dad's status as a lifelong Trekkie. And this book hits right at the heart of that obsession. Dr. Kaku takes classic sci-fi concepts like force fields and telepathy and time travel, and he explores whether they're actually possible under the known laws of physics, particularly his breakdown of the Star Trek teleporter and teleportation in general using quantum theory is just incredibly interesting. And the chapter on the different types of parallel universes is kind of mind blowing. Dr. Kaku's writing is clear and approachable and terrifically paced. It is without a doubt the most fun and accessible introduction to speculative physics I have ever come across. And you know, while we are on the subject of speculative physics, I have to give an honorable mention to Black Holes and Time Warps by Kip Thorne, the physicist who helped make the black hole in Interstellar as scientifically accurate as possible. This book melds deep theoretical physics with a genuine narrative flair, and Dr. Thorne makes concepts like wormholes and time travel feel both mind-bending and deceptively understandable. It's certainly dense and a little bit less accessible than some of these other picks, but it's also incredibly rewarding. The Fabric of the Cosmos by Brian Greene is the book that made me realize that my grasp of space-time was tenuous at best. Dr. Greene writes with such audacious clarity that you actually begin to understand just how much you don't understand. In this book, Greene takes you deep into relativity and quantum mechanics and string theory, and he does so in a way that is astonishingly easy to follow. Concepts like quantum chromodynamics and supersymmetry, things that would otherwise feel almost impossibly abstract, they become surprisingly graspable under Green's guidance. It is brain bending in the best possible way. I do want to also give an honorable mention to 
The Particle at the End of the Universe by Sean Carroll. I'm a huge fan of Dr. Carroll, and I'm not a big podcast guy, but his Mindscape podcast is one I always try to make time for. But I will admit his writing leans just a touch more dense than Brian Greene's and is therefore, in my opinion, slightly less accessible. Still, The Particle at the End of the Universe is an incredible account of the search for the Higgs boson, the particle that's responsible for the existence of mass. And the story is told with the insight and intellectual generosity of someone who is both brilliant and passionate about helping others understand. He brings you behind the scenes of one of the most important discoveries in modern physics. And while it certainly makes you work a little harder, the payoff is absolutely worth it. Topping my list is Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, by the one and only Richard Feynman. If ever there was an educator who could take esoteric concepts and make them accessible, it's Dick Feynman. This book is essentially a collection of anecdotes and misadventures and digressions that, when taken together, feel like a manifesto that insists that intellectual curiosity is its own reward. Feynman tackles complex ideas with the enthusiasm of a child trying to figure out just how a magic trick works, and somehow it just all clicks. This book is funny and sharp, and it's deeply insightful and inspiring. Very few books celebrate curiosity with this much charm. As a final honorable mention, I have to shout out Alex's Adventures in Numberland by Alex Bellos. This is the book that made me appreciate and at least partially even enjoy mathematics. In this book, Alex Bellos dives into the philosophy and the history of numbers with a genuinely contagious sense of wonder. He explores mathematical concepts in a way that's engaging and accessible and unexpectedly delightful. To my utter surprise, I even found inspiration in these pages for a novel that I've been working on feverishly ever since I read this book back in December of this past year. If you have ever thought math just wasn't for you, this book might just be the thing that changes your mind. At their best, nonfiction books reframe the way we see the world. Every book I've talked about here today gave me something beyond just facts or history or theory. They gave me stories, stories of discovery, of doubt, of stubborn curiosity, and the people bold enough to ask the big questions. They reminded me that science is less about answers and more about confronting the unknown. And whether it's quantum physics or mathematical oddities or the personal lives of brilliant minds, each of these books left a lasting impression on me. If even one of them sounds interesting to you, it is my sincere hope that you will check it out. Because if there's one thing I've learned from reading these books, it's that reality, when told well, can be every bit as mind-blowing as fiction. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to spend a little of it with me here on YouTube. If you have read any of these books, I would love to know what you think. Do you have any good relevant recommendations for me. Drop them down below in the comments. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.